so the club is called Berkeley XR and the idea is to inspire other students to create and to use this new platform to design, create and compose music and art. Uh, so every week we would show them different kind of gear or different kind of softwares or different kind of games and experiences that you can do in virtual reality and hope that some of them will find it so inspiring that they would want to build something by themselves. And I help a lot of my students uh, build their project. They come to me with a prototype or an idea and I just go with them through the stages of how to build this and to make this into reality or virtual reality. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge, in Massachusetts. We are now gonna be talking about creativity and music in the era of VR. We have Shirley Spikes joining us on the show, hello. Hi, how's it going? Thanks Good to so see much you. for coming on. Of course. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk to you. We have so much to unpack about this subject. Shirley Spikes, <laughs> yes, is the CEO of Virtue Studios, President of Berkeley College of Music Virtual Reality Club and on the advisory board at MUX. She's passionate about immersive technologies and spatial audio, unleashing our full creativity in the era of virtual reality. And you can find the links below to Virtuous Studios, to Play MUX, Wooger, and her Facebook page as well. So yes, check out those links. This is gonna be such an epic convo, breaking all this down. Let's, Shirley, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions. We love asking people. We find ourselves as stewards of Earth. What is your current take on the state of our world? Uh, it seems to me that the world is going to a place of valuing um, personal identity and discovering yourself with creativity and uh, coming with the full potential of what a person can get on any kind of field. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's <laughs> up. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Unleashing the full creative potential. Yeah, and things. valuing the, the self-discovery of people trying to reach that potential yes. for me. Um. Yes. Yeah, the, that, the, yeah, the process of finding out what we find to be most meaningful and fulfilling in our lives and then, and then going after that. As long as we have to have these right physiological needs met, we have to have the right basic, the tools that are available to us. Yeah, to but we to always so. had that. But what we have right now, I believe, is the idea of you can want more from life and that's okay and no one's going to judge you for that. You can be successful and no one's going to judge you for that. Quite the opposite, they're going to help you become even more successful than you would think you would be. So it's an era that of experimentation and trying to find the inner self of e each and every one of us. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's crazy thinking about the amount of, I believe it's somewhere around 1,500 total billionaires on the planet and how it's just looking like the, as, as the a pie of the economy of the planet is going to grow, it's going to be closer to 3,000. And entrepreneurs and artists and people who want to make the world a better place, people who actually want to change things to the better and to the greater good, which is yeah. incredible. Yes, yes. It's like billions of people around the world gaining access to democratized technologies exactly. at, the, at the edge of the field. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. It's a great journey. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, spe and specifically, um, I think the technologies that you're going to be teaching us about in this episode especially are going to unlock a lot of <laughs> yeah. creative potential. Let's, I hope so. Yes, yes. Let's do the journey. So. Okay, when you're when you find yourself <laughs> born in Israel, and you gotta, you're gonna have to teach us about kind of like the craziness. Like I, I'm really interested <laughs> in what this is like. It's so much different than you know being born in the U.S. That's and true. It's kind of like a much smaller piece of land, and that's true. In a crazier it's a very part very of, small piece in of a land. crazier part of the world. Um, in very some crazy ways. part of the yeah, world. Yes. So teach us about that and how you picked up your um, your interest in music and then got out to the Berkeley College of Music out here. I. Um, I started playing when I was four, so I don't remember any time of my life that I didn't do music or didn't hear sounds in my head or didn't analyze whatever is on the radio. So it was always a part of my journey. And Israel is a very, very small country located right in the Middle East between a lot of Muslim countries. So we're one of a kind. Uh, I think because it's a very small country, a lot of people finding themselves through the entrepreneur journey um, just because we don't have a lot of resources and people are like, okay, we need to generate money out of our ideas. Makes sense, kind of. 
Um, <laughs> it's a very, yeah, not yeah. only, a, yes. also hardware right, and also yes. a, a lot of stuff, cyber defense, which is, Israel is very big on. So I always grew up around entrepreneurs and people who want to get something more out of life. And I had a lot of people that told me that in Israel, you actually feel like you're living because something might happen to you. There are, um, Oh. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of Damn. dangers in Israel, but, but you learn to appreciate life because of it. And then can you give us an idea of like the density of, the, like, of, of powerful nodes of like individuals and companies? A majority of them are in Tel Aviv, is that... Uh, Tel Aviv, Herzliya is a huge one on startup companies. A lot of, like I think that the top 50 companies in the world have already opened a center in Israel. You have a lot of incubators there. Are a lot of headquarters are based in Israel. A lot of companies actually started in Israel. Yeah. A lot of companies that you're using on a daily basis, like Waze, for example. Yes. USB thumb drives were invented in Israel. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I believe... Cherry tomatoes as well. Cherry tomatoes? Cherry tomatoes oh, is what? an Israeli invention. Interesting. Yeah, there was something You're welcome. Like that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, be, I believe it was the, the vehicle that made the, um, the, la the lane um, assist where they would um, yeah. Uh, prevent... Yeah. The, yeah, that company also. Mobileye. Is, Mobileye? Mobileye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. I have a lot of friends who work there, actually. Yeah, yeah, see what's <laughs> up. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, shout out to the what's Israel What's up, tech. Israel? Yeah, yeah. software <laughs> peeps. Um, okay, so then um, all the way to, you know, having since four, you've always noticed sound. Always notice sound. I always notice sound. I always hear sounds. I always analyze songs in my head. I always try to understand better music. Uh, I went to the conservatory in Jerusalem. I grew up in Jerusalem. Um, and I went to the classical conservatory in Jerusalem and I did uh, a few classes also in the higher ac academy in Jerusalem. Um, and then I moved to a uh, school we call Ramon. Well, back then we called it Ramon, today we call it a BIN school, a Berkeley International Network School, where all my credits got transferred to Berkeley. Um, and I studied composition, arrangement, and conducting because I realized that I didn't want to just be a player that just plays to other people mm -hmm. or play other people's pieces. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to create my own music. Yes. Um, so I studied composition, arrangement, and conducting for three years. And after that, I took one year off to study and uh, get the money to get to Berkeley. It's really expensive, as you know. Yes. Uh, this is a very expensive school. It's here. a very expensive school. I yes. am on few scholarships, thank God, but yes, it's yes. still a very expensive school. So and this is a top Berkeley uh, College of Music is one of the top schools in the world for yes, music. Yes. Yeah. Frequently and ranked in top like five or so something. And like it's that. world leading and being the the top one of music education and music technology, the first one to get a degree for um, film scoring, the first one to offer uh, classes in virtual reality and in video games. Wow. So they're groundbreaking in a lot yeah. of different fields. Film scoring classes, VR, yeah, game yeah. classes. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. first one to get, I think, I think it was the first school to get jazz as a, like, as a degree. I Whoa. think the first school in America to get Whoa. jazz as a degree instead of just classical music or traditional music. Uh, so it was always breaking the ground. Of, Berkeley's yeah. Berkeley College of Music's been a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm always I'm trying to I'm trying to you know get in there and see what's going on. And, and just a little bit older than my country, honestly. <laughs> when Berkeley, I believe, was founded in '45. '45. Uh, and Interesting. Yeah, and Israel was founded at '48. <sighs> Yeah, the founding <laughs> of countries founding and yeah, countries. countries and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so okay, so yeah, cutting edge of music technology. You're out here now. You're doing electronic production and, and sound, sound design. design, correct? And you call this the biology of music, which That's I thought was I so see interesting. It. That's honestly how I see it. Sound and controlling sound. Yes, teach us about this. Uh, so yeah, I, I started actually studying film scoring and I moved to a different major which is electronic production and sound design and I didn't even know what I'm getting myself into, honestly. I thought it was just going to be trance music or you know party music, but not at all. Uh, so the way I see it, electronic production and sound design is the biology of music which is understanding the depth of sound and how does sound move 
through the air? How can I control it? How can I manipulate it? What does it mean to hear a sound? Why does it sound different when you play a note on a violin or on a piano, even though it's the same note? Mm -hmm. why, does, why doesn't it sound the same? If it's all just frequency and amplitude, it should sound the same, but it's not. So it's really getting into the depth of what sound actually mean and understanding how to design it and manipulate it any way you want. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it's like taking God control over a sound. It's actually biology. It's understanding yeah. how things are built. Yes. Why does it sound good? Why does it sound bad? Why do we like something better than the other thing? Why does some sounds are natural and some sounds are not? And how does it move through the space? Yes. <laughs> Yes, the same note on different instruments. Exactly. So that's, that's a good one. You also had all these other ones of um, which note to play, uh, how long to play that note. So yeah, how one strong, of the things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we work with MIDI controllers that allow us to to control which notes you're playing in which specific time. Uh, M -I -D -I, which specific M I D I for those that don't know M I D I MIDI. MIDI this is the protocol that we transfer audio from, and a lot of our students are actually designing MIDI controllers and different ways of how to manipulate and control sound. Uh, using buttons, using breath control, using pedals, using virtual reality controllers, for example. Uh, so you could use a lot of different things to control and manipulate music. Yeah, because the days of the mouse and keyboard, those are like long. We're way past, We're way going past that now. So yeah. teach us, teach us about yeah how how um, how you would actually be able to do cool things like so, manipulate the um, music. Um, yeah, so. The way we see it, at least in electronic music, is less like a linear piece of music, less like this is the beginning and then this happened and then this happened, and more kind of like puzzles or blocks that you create those blocks independently and then you choose however you want to build them in every different form and you can play them in reverse or you can play them in the yes. same time and you kind of create yourself those templates that later on you're using for different materials. So the same song can sound differently. This is why we listen to DJs, um, how they take different audio pieces and combine them together to one big piece. Yes, yes. So, so then how does, how do I make one of these kind of like uh, mo modules and then so, how would you go about designing that and then and then how do you plug that in with the rest of them how can you make it go backwards speed it up amplify it oh, so sorry, we sorry. use something that we call DAWs uh, which are digital audio workspa uh, workspaces yes. uh, those are softwares that help us control record control edit and do any kind of manipulation that we want on sound um, I'm using a few different ones so usually for a live performance you would use a software called Ableton Live uh, for building patches and to actually understand the signal flow and the sound you could use Max MSP which is a very nice software that you can design your own sounds in um, other than that there are a lot of different tools like Cubase Pro Tools Logic uh, each one is using his workspace and then kind of create music based on the workspace that he chose mm -hmm. yeah the tools are so many now and they're just <sighs> So many, yeah. and they always come up with new ones, which is great, I think. Yes, I hope that the time that we spend learning tools can translate into knowing how to use the next gen tools, because you don't, you know, yeah. you don't want skills to just become Definitely. obsolete. Definitely. In some ways. Um, the way that we perceive music has evolved a lot from the single channel to the stereo that is true to so. ambisonics <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so when we started playing instruments and starting performing as humans uh we did it firstly in small chambers usually in royalty families when we called it chamber music like a small set of instruments that were playing uh like a little and nice piece or a minuet uh, and then we moved into a bigger symphony halls and we kind of tried to, to get the viewer to feel something bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way that the orchestra is sitting, the way that everything is, is designed in those symphony halls is so you can get the best sound possible. And they're sitting and they're spreading everywhere so you can get the entire feeling of listening to a symphony orchestra. And from that, uh, we can go uh, uh, forward in time into recording music. And for start, we had 
only in mono mm -hmm. and we recorded in mono and we listened in mono to everything and then came stereo who changed it everything that we know about sound and suddenly oh my god I have two channels and they can move between them and I can like pan things into a different mic into different speakers and each ear can hear something different and then we moved into getting it on our smartphones and on our computers and headphones became like so much more advanced over the years and you have now noise cancelling and you have uh, bone conducting headphones which sits not on your ears but on your bone conduct on your bone conducting they're Whoa. called yeah and they send vibrations directly into your brain without even going through your ear oh so you can goodness. hear two layers you can hear the real world and you can hear the virtual world or the non-existing world in your ears in the same time oh my goodness. and it comes to today where i think that our world is going towards ambisonic and spatial audio uh, so in the past what we used to have we didn't have a definition for that But now we call it headlock music, yes. which is music that is just locked to your head That means that if you hear something in headphones if you move your hand if you move your head The sound is gonna stay the same doesn't matter how you move you can walk you can turn around and it's gonna sound the same and We took that and we amplified it today into ambisonic or spatial sound so firstly you can hear the room and it sounds way more bigger in depth secondly when you turn your head the music is going to move based on where it sits in the room so let's say i have a drum kit right here and i hear it on my headphones and when i move my head it's going to stay in the same place instead of moving with my head just like we hear music on just with our ears and the idea is that we we're not only hearing left and right we can also hear back we can also hear front we can also hear up and down yes we don't have that in headphones yet we're starting to get into that and understanding how to record and to get sound that is immersive into the world of virtual reality. The 360 sound ambisonics <laughs> is so cool because we're talking, you know, what used to be we'd go movie theater, we'd go to a surround sound system at our house and we'd oh, be like, oh, it's today. so yeah. cool when you can hear the person walking from over here to over here. But then these are also have so much healing potential, meditative potential, spiritual, transcendent Definitely. potential. I mean, Definitely. Yeah. The For everything. Experiences that we can design inside of ambisonic chambers. Mm -hmm. I mean... Like, in VR, let people feel different places, let people visit different places, let people feel something that they've never felt before. Actually enhance them with sound. Movie theaters are already doing that using the Dolby Atmos uh, studios. So what they did is they designed kind of a 360 environment with speakers everywhere and the sound just travels between them. And now the composer doesn't even have to know about this. He just have a little joystick and he can choose where he wants the sound to go. So he doesn't even need to say, now we want it on speaker number 17 and now we want it on speaker number five. No, it does it for him and you can make automations and you can actually make the sound rotate around your head or move around the space, which I think is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this Am I scaring you? <laughs> I just love the simplicity because it is really democratizing how, how easy it is to yeah. be like you're just like oh it's a joystick now and yeah. soon it's just thought and, and it's just like the simplicity for creativity um, and this is so critical for, for human um, ingenuity I'm really looking forward to that being unleashed more and I want you to drop us into um, you being the president at the VR club at that Berkeley is true. College of so Music. Yes. last year I uh, I started the club actually with my friend Maxime Gautier. Um, he came to me. He uh, we talked a little bit about the club, and then he said, "Yeah, I need a co-president who would uh, manage it together with me." So I started Berkeley XR. That's the official name of our club, and the idea is to inspire. Which stands for mixed reality. Right. It stands for, okay, so XR is an umbrella term for virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people said that it's expanded realities or extended realities or extreme realities, and each time it happened, one company just coined that or uh, decided that that's their thing. So now we just see XR as an umbrella term Got for it. everything that has to do with immersive technologies. Cool. Uh, so the club is called Berkeley XR and the idea is to inspire other students to create and to use this new platform to design, create and compose music and art. 
Uh, so every week we would show them different kind of gear or different kind of softwares or different kind of games and experiences that you can do in virtual reality and hope that some of them will find it so inspiring that they would want to build something by themselves. And I help a lot of my students uh, build their project. They come to me with a prototype or an idea and I just go with them through the stages of how to build this and to make this into reality or virtual reality. Obviously. Yes, yes. So um, this is cool because you're doing what I think if we could get to more uh, labs and or communities, right? This is so critical. You show new gear and Correct. how those can make new experiences. You show 360 video. You yeah. show uh, record. You record potentially video games. Tell stories in VR. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Tell this us. This is a platform oh, yes. that allows you to do whatever you want and. This is an exciting time because VR is so new that whatever you do in this field, you're the first one to do that. There are no rules. No one's going to tell you, oh, this is the way to do things. There are no ways or protocols of how to do things. You can design whatever you want. You can come up with a new idea right now and you're probably going to be the first one to think about that. Which is, I think, is a very exciting time uh, for everyone, for any kind of... Um, field to go into virtual reality. I've seen designers go into virtual reality, I've seen architects, I've seen mathematicians, physicists, doctors who use virtual reality, um, uh, psychologists using this new platform to either tell their story, help their patients, help their clients, whatever it is, this medium can take it. Uh, you just need to put your hands on it and not be scared of new challenges. I love how you said the frontier in this field is that, you know, with only maybe a couple million of these of, of these um, uh, extended realities um, yeah. umbrella terms across these hardware devices across the world right now, if you have an idea for it, you are really potentially one of the first ones to have that idea for it. And then to actually be able to execute it, um, you're going to be seeing tens of millions of people using these platforms soon, even hundreds of millions. And then you're going to have a mass, you're going to, whatever you built for it, hopefully will be part of a massive library that will be used by so many people. More than that, you could be the leader of that. You can determine this from now on, this is how we work. You can actually change the history of virtual reality right now. Yeah. Imagine that any kind of field that you're studying, you're hearing about those breakthrough people who just tried something different, tried to break the rules and see what happens. Virtual reality is so new that anyone can have um, their place to do that. And I've seen so many amazing ideas. Uh, we have a student, for example, who is trying to visual, uh, visualize mixes in virtual reality. Like, how does a compressor work? How does a reverb work? How does all those tools that we're using to create audio, how do they actually look in space? Mm -hmm. I had another student uh, who was working on kind how of- How do they look in space? I'm so interested. Right? That is so interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to check up with that student. So he's still working on that um, project. Gosh. Even just how the sound is being propagated through the room. Yeah. We had people. Yeah. We had people that did 360 videos. Uh, we have now the power station of Berkeley in New York. Uh, we just acquired the power station. It's a big studio that used to be re for recording a lot of big artists. Uh, like a virgin was recorded there, for example. And today, Berkeley is using that for recording music, but also f for 360 videos. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is pushing the edge even further. Yeah, yeah. How hard it is to be the first one to do something today. How easy it is to be the first one to do something in virtual reality. Think about that. Interesting. Yeah. Do you want to really add another app to the app store or do you want to potentially go and pioneer uh, virtual or augmented reality? How hard it is to be the best jazz player in the world. How easy it is to be the first player in virtual reality. Just the first. Mm. It's kind of like Mars. Yeah. 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 Go, yeah be the first one on, uh, on Mars. Be the first one. Um, to call, oh, that's another thing that some of my yeah. students created a, Mar uh, 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 a tour on Mars through virtual reality so you can actually visit Mars. Yeah, there's so yeah. many that are working on the planets. Yeah, on the, and yeah moons, it's so much fun. Visiting celestial bodies. Yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah, the, the, the uses of this are so endless. And I, I really I, I kind of want to hear what your thoughts are on this as you know, we're going to drop into the next 
um, uses of this for you, but what do you think about the human mind, especially the child's mind, like, of course, learning from a textbook versus learning from spatial intelligence with uh, an augmented or virtual reality? It's almost as though I, the brain is just going to be able to capture the knowledge so much more effectively. I think it depends on what, but on a lot of things, virtual reality can actually help you study, be more focused for start. We have so many distractions today and everyone keep talking about the distractions and the phone and the Facebook and, and your emails and everything. In VR, you can't do that. You only have a headset and that's it. Now you're immersed for 10 minutes and you're going to stay in those 10 minutes and you're not going to check your Facebook on the background because you can't because right now you're immersed into this new world. Um, a lot of people have called virtual reality the perfect empathy machine. Yeah. Because that, that is the first time that you can literally walk in someone else's shoes. Yeah. You can feel what it feels to be someone else, to get out of your comfort zone for just a second from your own living room and to find a new story. So I think it's a great medium for storytelling, for sharing experiences with each other, uh, and for creating just new content everywhere. And I think that anyone can find something that he's passionate about and just bring it to the new world of virtual reality, which is how I got into virtual reality, honestly. I just took my passions and I said, you know what, this is what I like. Let's let other people enjoy what I see as fun or what I see as exciting. Yeah, I can't, I can't, get, <laughs> I can't, I can't get over that. Um, when you can really get behind the eyes of someone uh, you can really start uh, gaining a sense of empathy. And right now, yeah, what we're doing is we're doing, oh, I wonder what this person's life was like the last 20 years. Can I really get behind it and try and understand it? So now you can. Now you can go as deep as uh, even people that are being displaced around the world or have really corrupt uh, governments or really tough ways to meet their basic physiological needs. That way you can potentially become um, more aware of that and want to participate. Definitely. In, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I, yeah, connect uh, people together. It's interesting. It's like perfect empathy machine. Yeah, I definitely agree that it can be a very good source for empathy. I also do believe that like eye to eye is just so critical, like passing, you know, a good like minute, just like looking at someone else's eyes. You need to be very cautious with VR. That's what I think. A lot of people will use it for bad things. Um, you need to understand the risk that you're taking when you're stepping into someone else's shoes. Mm. That's how I see it. Um, there was someone oh, yeah. who created a VR experience to show what it feels like to live in a hostile environment of domestic abuse. Yeah. And in this environment, you're a woman being verbally attacked by your husband who is yelling at you and throwing things at you and i've heard of people who are crying and people who really it broke them down to pieces and you need to be very very careful the rule that we put ourselves through in vr is don't do anything in vr that you would regret in real life yeah yeah yeah, yeah anything yeah. that you would regret in real life don't do it in vr why, why, like if i'm not gonna in a physical world be like oh i you know i should really know what it feels like to you know be physically abused by someone else it's like I, I don't I don't want to do it in the physical world. I don't want to do it in the right? virtual world. Um, we need to just eradicate that from or our world. Or killing people. Or killing people. Just get it yeah. out of our physical world and not have to put people behind it in virtual spaces so that they can better empathize because we're changing people's physiology when they go behind the eyes like that. Yeah, it's like, and it could really tear apart people. Tear you need to be people. very careful with that. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up. I think that's a really important one. Um, yeah, yeah, and and but on a, okay, on a more positive note, we have yeah, vir, virtual studios. Virtual yes, studios. You can find that link before in the bio below. You guys, um, you guys won the um, the reality virtually hackathon at MIT. In top ten innovative ideas. In top ten innovative ideas in 2017 and 2018. 2018, I won with a different group. With a different yeah. group. Yeah. So, but, but that's still huge. You won twice in a row. Yeah. That's that's lit. Thank Good you. Good job. <laughs> Good job. And 
So then you this this development of these immersive musical experiences, marrying music and VR. So yeah, teach us about、wow. being in the conductor seat. <laughs> like I wow, love that. Wow, that hackathon changed my life. Honestly, they、yeah. even called me the year afterwards to talk about my experience in the hackathon and invite other people. So that was my first year in Boston. I was here for two months. I could barely even speak English coherently, and I decided, you know what, I need to know people. I need to find out people. I need to know the scene. I need to know who is against who and who do I need to talk to. So I signed up for a bunch of hackathons, and one of them ended up being the virtually、uh, reality virtually hackathon. And I entered there, and I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about VR back then. And I sat next to a guy. And usually, what I do is I just offer my services as a musician and as a composer and a sound designer, and say, "Yeah, I can do music. I don't know anything about VR, but let's do music." And there was a guy sitting next to me, and he he said something boring about blockchain. I didn't even bother listening to him. And then he asked me, "What do you do?" And I said, "Well,、uh, I'm a, I'm a musician. I do music."、And、he said, "Oh yeah, maybe you can like design an instrument in VR that like I don't know when you move your hands it moves." And I said, "What? You mean like a theremin in VR?" And he said, "Yeah, just design a theremin in VR." And I said. Why a theremin if you can design an entire virtual orchestra that like sits everywhere, and then you can be the conductor, and then you can control everything just like a real conductor does on stage, and you can like cue them and stop them and everything. And he told me, "Hey, you should pitch." And I looked to the other side,、uh, and that guy was sitting next to me, and there was another guy, and I'm like, "Hey, dude, I'm pitching. How's it going?" And I pitched my idea, and he joined me. And after three days of work. Uh, we created the first in the world virtual reality symphony orchestra that can be controlled with actual hand gestures, just like a real conductor does on stage. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's a yes, it's yes, a Cinderella story of how I got into、up. VR. That's what's up. Yeah, you're just you're. We sometimes we need these.、Uh, we, it's a reoccurring theme of people that sit with us on the show is these these bits of stimuli that come from mentors or from family or from people around us in our environments that are just like. Oh,、eh, you should do something about that. Yeah, do something about that. Oh, you mean like ah?、Uh, oh. oh. <laughs> And so, okay, so tell us about you know the hardware、um, and how I can just go okay violins and etc. We're yes. using the medium of virtual reality, and we're using the immersive 360 space to design the entire orchestra.、Um, so you're standing right in the middle where the conductor is standing, and you have your score, and you have the entire orchestra. Just around you, where the first violin sits right to your left, and the last、uh, double bass is sitting right to the other side. So you can actually it it takes away your entire space. So you physically need to move your head to see everything, which I love about VR. I hate when people just use it as a 2D space.、Mm -hmm. For me, VR use the 360.、Mm -hmm. um, So we design an entire symphony orchestra, and we're using a tool called Leap Motion to scan the hands of the player. And based on simple gestures that conductors do, we were able to teach people how does it feel to conduct on stage. And honestly, to be honest with you, the best sound is from the conductor point of view. If you want to get the best point of view to hear a symphony orchestra, it's right where the conductor stands. I love that. Yeah. The entire like all the music just comes right to your ears. Yes, yes, yes.、Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, what a cool yeah! And then if it's ambisonic right there, and then it moves with you exactly.、Oh, so cool. So、yeah. if the double basses are sitting here, the cellos are here, and the the violins are right here, if you move your head, they would actually stay locked in their position, not locked to your head. And you can get the experience of how it feels like to conduct a full symphony orchestra. This is so the future of immersive experiences. It's like the the ambisonics, the virtual reality, the spatial engagement process. These are all such critical ways to be able to unleash creative potential. And it's and it's, yeah, I'm, I love it. And you we, you can sign up. In the link, yeah, yeah,、well. you can sign to our website, and we're gonna send you some updates about our game. I love it, Virtual <laughs> Studios. Everyone, Virtual check it out. Virtual Studios, and then also on the advisory board at Mux. Mux. Yeah, that is, is pretty is new. Play、yeah. Mux. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's Mux. It's already on Steam, so you can already buy it. Uh, it's a game that lets you design um, sound in virtual space. So you, we're using modular synthesis ideas. Uh, so you're using tools like an oscillator or a cutoff filter or LFOs, which is a low frequency oscillators, and you patch them together to create your own patch that can play sounds or you can trigger the sounds by yourself and you can create an entire show using just virtual reality. Um, so I just got on the advisory board of this team. This is another really interesting one and we have some images that you can see embedded yeah. here. It's just like so cool how you can take and move around different pieces <laughs> of music in the, in the 3D space. And, and actually like create your own instruments with your own unique sound. Yes. That's the fun part about it. Yes, yes. We were talking a bit about that um, also on like a, right now the best we can do is really like voice and like you can do a little bit with like other, but like to be able to really go deep into um, uh, creating your own instrument. To feel like you're inside the track, like you are a part of it. It's it's surrounding your world. It's, oh, so so I'm literally, I'm in the, I, I You're can, in the middle. You can just build it through the space, you can put it everywhere you want and then you can just step outside and build another one next to it and then connect them to each other. So it's all around you, it's surrounding you with sound. And I can move my character through it and be able to look, th look Correct. at things. Correct, and, and one of the things, things that we're working on adding right now since I got into the team is adding spatial audio to it as well. Whoa, so I, I can Because I think that it. this is gonna be That's the future. Cool. Yeah. And then so and then the way that the pieces are connected, I can do something like create a different, rewire the connection from uh, the way that it's moving every once in a while over here and I can just change. Exactly. So you can say, let's say you have like a constant sound of ah, and then you can take this and connect it, let's say to an LFO and then suddenly it's ah, and it moves and then you can control the, the the amount of times that it do that, you can control the, the velocity of it, you can control anything you want and create your own instruments and understanding sound in a better way. Yeah, this, this world around us feels like it sometimes is being designed by <laughs> audio and <laughs> creators. There's yeah. so many things in our world that like when you pay attention as close as you did when you're four, you know, when you're really, really starting at a young age to start paying attention to how it all sounds around you and you can dive in by like closing your eyes. It's not stuff. as fun as it sounds. I it's love not it. as fun. I love it. We're aware of all the sounds. Like we don't have background music. It doesn't what exist do you mean in you our don't world. Have background music? We don't have background music because when we hear music, even if you put it in the cocktail party, we're gonna hear it right here. We don't have background music. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not a thing that like exists in our brain. We always hear everything that is happening around us. See, but that's a, I, I like that a lot. But uh, I also hear that hear you on how that can be. A I lot love when people different. ask me what is your favorite kind of music or what do you like to listen to, and I say nothing. Are you crazy to listen to music on my free time? <laughs> you know how much music I listen to when I'm at work. No, I want to. I want to rest. I want to listen to silence. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's I want to listen to silence when I'm resting. I want to listen to absolute silence. Yeah, what are those anechoic chambers? Like, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you, you get locked. Or just go those. into the studio, like, ah. studio yeah, 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 yeah. Noise canceling. Ah. Yeah, no, but yeah, I don't listen to music on my own time. That's my free that's time. that's such a yeah. That's a <laughs> that's like yeah. When you're it's like whatever field you're in, if you're doing that field, even like before you sleep, when you wake up in the morning, it's like. You're an entrepreneur then, right? Or like, what's the, how would it, yeah. You know what happens when I listen to music? I would listen to a song and then I would say, oh, that's kind of a catchy song. That's nice. Oh, that's a cool song. Oh, they did this. Oh, okay. And then they used this. Oh, I would have used it differently. I would have like designed it like this. And I would maybe yeah, like yeah. add a violin here and maybe like some horns over there and maybe some drums. Oh, I know a drummer that I can call. You know what? I can book the studio for next week and then I can record this. And maybe then we can call the singer to do the arrangement and then like we can, yeah, yeah, you that's could actually work and that happens every three minutes every time yeah. a song changes every time a song changes it's <laughs> every time yeah and meanwhile i'm over here like yeah yeah i like that oh there's music i didn't even notice that i just yeah. left like spotify on yeah. Yeah. let's fall asleep on spotify yeah, like yeah. 
Yeah, that's, 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 that's very funny, your analysis. Yeah, when you, when you go really deep in a field, then everything is like you're like your yeah. biologist, you're like you're aware microbes of and yeah, yeah, everything skin. Yeah, it's all, it all becomes in a sense uh, yeah. your field that you're going deep in. Um, okay, now let's do Wooger. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so teach us about this. This is an Israeli company and this has a crazy haptic feedback suit. You can feel sound. It is. So I'm working on the content creation for this company and they're called Woodger. And they've created uh, two things. Firstly, they created a haptic feedback strap that you can put on you. Um, and then they created a bigger one that is called uh, the Woodger vest, which you wear on yourself and it can take sounds and turn them into vibration based on the frequency of the sound so you can physically feel sound and not just hear it yeah uh, it enhances all the experiences that you have especially on virtual reality uh, which is mainly what i use it for and we're working on creating sounds and libraries for them that can work with their suit so you can not only hear sound but you can also perceive it as actual vibration just like you would hear it at a club so the biggest difference between how you hear music in a club or how you hear it in your own headphones is exactly that it's the subs and subs are notes that are so low that our ears can't even hear them but you can feel them as vibrations when you hear it through headphones the vibrations are not there because the sound is not strong enough. So you get the feeling of being in a club without it, which is really revolutionary, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, the, I feel as though uh, strapping you into a wooger permanently is fun because you, you would be like, <laughs> you'd be like, I don't want to keep feeling the sound on me all the time. <laughs> that would be you. Yeah, and yeah. Meanwhile, I would be like, oh, this is cool. But then eventually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you just, there's so many applications for this. I was telling you a bit about David Eagleman and Neosensory and yeah. how that's interesting for people that are deaf, that they can actually be able to feel the vibration of words and learn words. It's like new senses, right? It's a very interesting concept to be able to use haptics to hack our senses. We're trying to use it also for physical therapy, for helping with physical therapy. Uh, we're using it for uh, anxiety attacks. Uh, usually when people feel an anxiety attack, they need something to hug them and to hold them. Yeah, yeah. That is a great way to do it using uh, the vest. Um, we're working with blind people and trying to uh, get them get like a room scan and then whenever they get close to one of the walls it would start vibrate on just one side so you would know that you're getting closer to a wall and you're about to hit it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to find a lot of different applications for it as well as uh, introduce it to virtual reality and music and virtual experiences just to enhance them and to get more of the feeling of it. Yeah, yeah, and haptics are also nuts because it is such a crucial part of our immersion into virtual realities. Uh, as soon as you can be completely strapped and when you, you know, step on the twig, you actually feel it snap on your foot. I mean, we're talking like some crazy, crazy Well, stuff. haptics, I think, is the hardest one to recreate in virtual reality because haptics is everything you feel. Yeah. It could be feeling like a bump on your shoulder, but it could also be the sense of, of hot and cold or yeah. the sense of fur versus steel, or it could be anything, yeah. anything that you can see, anything that you can touch, you need to have kind of a sensation. And I think it's one of the hardest topics in virtual reality. Um, but uh, the Woodrow Company, it was designed by musicians for musicians and it works on waveforms. So it actually detects audio, and I think that a lot of music musicians would love to try and use that. And then you also went and to told us a bit about the way that um, uh, uh, lead this actually leads us into <laughs> this. Uh, this actually really interesting leads us into the way that DJs are now at venues and they have ambisonic systems that they can use. So Dolby Atmos has already opened, I believe, three or four venues in the world for spatial audio. That means that the entire venue is surrounded by speakers and the DJ goes on stage and he can actually create sounds that are moving through the air and they said that you just feel like you're inside the track. 
just immersed inside it while you're in a club with your friends and suddenly a sound just comes and round around your head and just goes away. I think it's a very cool experience and I think that we're going to see more and more of them uh, um, over the years. The Im immersive experiences are going to be taking a huge foothold in society. Um, definitely. Definitely. And I want to hear some of your thoughts on the future of all of these technologies kind of coalescing. Where do you see it all? So firstly, I'm seeing virtual reality becoming more mainstream and more people adopting it. And I think that one of the fields that haven't adopted it yet is fashion. And once fashion people with a fashion degree would actually get their hands on it and say, I can do it better, we would actually get fashionable glasses that we can all wear outside and we're not going to look as stupid as we look now with VR. Because a lot of people are telling me, oh yeah, I look dumb or I can't see anything with it. So I believe that this is going to happen sooner or later. Also, the, the hardware, hardware side of things, it's just like taking the compute off of the glasses and putting the compute in the cloud and then the 5G infrastructure enabling. Definitely. I think it was 10 gigs a second or something. Ridiculous Definitely. Like We're that. getting there. We're already in the place where our phones can run VR, which is incredible. Your phone, your like pocket computer can actually run virtual reality simulations. Yes, it's not the best, of course, we have a lot of work to do, but we're getting there and the more I see people complain about virtual reality, the more I just want to tell them, just give us a few more years, I promise you we're working on that, we're getting there, it just takes some time. Uh, but a lot of people are complaining that, for example, you can't move more than one meter. We're working on it, just give us like a year or two and we're gonna get there. Or people are telling me, uh, yeah, okay, I get it, you can shoot things, but what else can you do? And really, we're working on it, you see me, I'm working on a few projects at the same time, and inspiring others to create content for it so we can create an ecosystem where we all profit from virtual reality, and then I think it's gonna become way more mainstream, more people are going to use that, more professions are going to use it, not just for video games. Oh well, look, um, there's thousands for doctors, there's thousands for architects. They're Cedric. already yeah. using that. Yeah. They're already using thousands, that. Thousands though, in the, in the library. Oh my gosh, look at Here the Here on heart. Mass General, they're using virtual reality and augmented reality to treat patients. They're already embedding it into their systems. For example, uh, um, doctors who want to treat a patient but they need to to keep clean hands but they need to write something down instead of actually taking a pen and paper just in space just use augmented reality to write something in space mm -hmm. uh Voice they use it, it. Yeah, yeah yeah architects why show someone a blueprint if you can just let them walk in the building you haven't even built yet yes. just let them walk in it enjoy it yes. So I believe that more and more industries are going to realize that this is the future and it's already here and you need to adopt to it. Yeah. And then um, I want to ask you a couple questions that we typically ask on the way out of sure. the episode. Um, this is going to be interesting to ask you. Are we, <laughs> are we in a simulation? Are we in a simulation? Are we? I don't know. A lot of people have called me the glitch in the simulation. So um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Does it matter? You're smiling, you're having fun. Does it matter if it's a simulation or it's real? For me, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> okay, okay. And how about what is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oof. Wow, that's... Um, so I see beauty define, uh, I see beauty, hmm. I see beauty as three elements that needs to come together for me. Uh, and I call them the three H. So the first one is heart. That means that you need to have your heart in something and you need to actually truly believe in it and love it. Secondly is your head. It needs to be well thought and well processed. And the third thing is hands, which means it needs to be well crafted and well done. And those three combined together can create actual beauty. That's a good synthesis. I like that one. Like <laughs> thank that you. One. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, Charlotte, thank you so, so much. This thank been, you. This has been thank so enriching, <laughs> so enlightening. We have sure. so, the edge is being pushed. You are Definitely. pushing the edge in the virtual Definitely. reality space. You're unleashing so much of the cool potential that we have with creativity <laughs> and music in the era of VR. I want everyone to take a look at Shirley's links in the bio below, virtuostudios.com, playmux.com, wooger.com, also her Facebook. Go and check that out. <laughs> support, support. Go and keep sharing this type of content around. Get more people, our coworkers, our friends, our family, online communities. Let's get talking about virtual reality. Be that first in that career to be able to create in one of be the Be the first. Fields. Go be there. The first. Don't be afraid. That's right. Don't be afraid of a challenge. That's it's going right. to be worth it. That's right. That's right. And support the organizations and the entrepreneurs and the artists that you believe in around the world. Definitely. Support simulation. Our links are below. Help us continue coming to cool places like Cambridge and conducting interviews with awesome people like Shirley. And go and build the future everyone manifest your dreams into the world we love you very much thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon Woo-hoo. peace good job Woo!